Hey everybody, Michael here. I just wanted to give you a heads up that in this episode, there are brief mentions of suicidal ideation and the loss of loved ones due to gun violence. So part of it may be difficult to hear. Both of you, it's your last chance to do this. This has to be the most fun you have all year. Fuck fun, you better drop kick a bitch. Said you wanna be a legend. A statement, a statement, a star. Said you wanna be a legend. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to The Let Out, a legendary podcast. I'm your host, Michael Street. Just over a month ago, we started on this journey with 10 houses vying for $100,000. And now, we've reached the end of that journey. Welcome to Legendary's Season 2 finale. This week, our two remaining houses of Miyaki Mugler and Balenciaga participated in the Ballroom 5000 Ball. But before they faced off, we were treated to the debut of Deshaun Wesley's new ballroom house of Basquiat, as well as a stunning performance from Meg Thee Stallion. The House of Balenciaga gave a Love is the Message theme performance. It was really beautiful and soft in areas, but hard hitting when it needed to be. Miyaki Mugler brought the fire, literally. They chose to bring it to the runway as these sort of freakish, magical creatures and gave us what we've been getting from them all season long. Top tier, perfectly executed performance. For the final challenge of the season, the houses had to face off in an all-team redemption battle. Each had to send out one person to face off in each of the five elements. After the battles, it was Mugler who walked away with the most one-on-one wins. At the end of the night, after winning the Superior House Trophy four times in a row, the House of Miyaki Mugler won the ultimate prize in $100,000. Here today with us, we have the house that gave them the fight of a lifetime, Balenciaga, to tell us about what it was like setting the bar so high and what it really feels like to get so close but miss out on the top slot. Known as the House of Champions, here is the House of Balenciaga. Ballroom is about surprises. When somebody say you can't do something, the baddest bitch always go out there and say, I can. Hey, Shannon, how are you? I'm well, and yourself? Good, good. Hey, honey, what's up? What's tea? Welcome to the let out, you guys. Uh, Congratulations on making it through the entire season of Legendary. Like, how does that feel for you guys? Hail. Pure hail. (laughs) (laughs) It was... It was a lot. It was crazy. No shade. But it was worth it. It was fun. You mean just like going through everything, putting together productions week after week, that kind of stuff? That and some. (laughs) 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 It's definitely with production. It's just like the contestants, like everything on top of that was dancing every day, waking up super early. Like it was just a lot. Mm hmm. But for you, it was, how was the season, like, going through it all, for you specifically, Shannon, like, did you, was it something that you were sort of prepared for, or was it a bunch of things that you had no clue to anticipate? No, it's something that I prepared for, because I live in Atlanta, the home of reality, where reality got its boost in the world. And I've been a part of the Housewives of Atlanta, productions and people. I've been knowing them since day one. I filmed a couple of pilots and TV shows and movies and things. So I'm very aware of how production and things work. Mm -hmm. Um, So it helped me in this process. The only thing that I wasn't used to is not having a glam squad and people to do things for me because of COVID. But thank God I was blessed and prepared to be able to do everything myself. Oh, wait, you did all your own hair and makeup the whole season? Own hair, own makeup, own wardrobe, own nails, everything. She pulled and even did my kids. You carry. 
you should have seen what Shannon brought to Legendary. Like when we first, when I first met Shannon, she had four bellboys just carrying 20 boxes each. And it was filled with a bunch of effects, clothes, makeup, like everything for us for the rest of the season. Like she came full out prepared. Mother bitch. No shade. And still didn't have enough. <laughs> Shana, you ended up having this really amazing moment in the finale episode, obviously with Megan, where she's like, calls you classy and said that you demanded respect. And I was just wondering, like, how did that feel to have, you know, I guess the judge sort of recognize that, which would, will be on, you know, television? It was, it's something that I stand in, mm -hmm. that I already know. I'm honored that she saw that and she took notice and made mention of it because I've earned that respect because I have put my heart on dedication into this culture, this art, the scene. And it was a blessing that somebody took notice of it so that the world can know that we have so many other people who have done it too. And they get their just respect and dues um, as well as Sasha, my counterpart on the show. We put our hard work into this ballroom scene and we're so grateful. We, we are blessed that we have been able to do that and showcase another part of ballroom. So it was a blessing. Speaking of the finale and um, the finale performance itself, there was so much going on. The production was so fab, like the staging, everything. And I just wanted to hear a little bit about, you know, inspiration and, and, and what all went into that for you guys. Shannon, I'd love to hear from you first. And then, honey, I would love to hear a little bit from you also about the choreography and, and all that. So the category was called What Would Ballroom Be in 5,000 Years? So it's like Ballroom 5,000. And one thing, if you know the history about ballroom, in order to get to 5,000 years, you have to know the past. And the one thing that we know for sure about the future is it always repeats the past. And it was our love letter to Ballroom. Our final production and performance, if the House of Balenciaga wanted to showcase Ballroom, we wanted to always bring a piece of real Ballroom to television so that the world can learn our history. And so the... The ballroom whole theme is love is the message. And we use that as our theme for this performance. The kids wanted to put on a concert. So that because you're putting ballroom in the limelight, what better way to do a concert? And I capped it off with the founding mother of the House of Balenciaga, Raquel um, Balenciaga, her iconic performance on in the ballroom scene for Face one night. I took that inspiration and brought it to the stage because one thing that we'll always we're sure of is ballroom where repeats itself. From 5,000 years from now, somebody is going to continue to do that move. And I wanted to honor that. Yeah. We wanted to make sure that when the category was calling for what will ballroom look like in 5,000 years from now, we wanted people to realize that Yes, there's going to be probably different categories and different opportunities, but we wanted people to understand that the love and family is always going to stay the same in ballroom and that it's never going to change. So the fact that we wanted to put on a concert for our last performance, we wanted the world to understand that ballroom is growing and ballroom is coming out to the forefront. We want people to know that we are able to put on performances and be on stages and be backup dances for celebrities. And we can entertain the masses because, I mean, every other um, community has stole from um, our culture. So why not respect us and give us the respect we need? Put us in the light. We want some spotlight, too. Shannon, you spoke a little bit about this a second ago, but can you talk to me a little bit about how the House of Balenciaga specifically was started? And, and we'll go from there. So the House of Balenciaga started from a split from the House of Mugler. The overall parents, um, founding parents at the time, Raquel and Harold Balenciaga, were Mugler's. They branched off and started the House of Balenciaga in 2002. Almost 20 years later, you have us. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Mugler's have branched off and made Balenciaga and the House of Garçons. So it is amazing how the top three houses our family. What was the house sort of known for in the beginning, the first few years? The House of Balenciaga was known for face, body, face, body, realness, and I would say runway and performance. Okay. 
this is a quite well-rounded house. Mm -hmm. And so how did you come to either the scene first? You told a little bit about this on the show, and I absolutely am not going to let you leave without asking you about that. Uh, how did you came to the scene and then a little bit of how you found your way into the house of Balenciaga? So, of course, on the show, I told about my humble beginnings. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Thing, can I get $17.2 million? Baby, I'm broke. I'm broke, sweetie. I don't have no money. I have no money. Don't come after me. No, no, I don't have no money. Girl, stop lying to the people, girl. <laughs> we saw those effects. No, I'm, <laughs> no collections, no nothing. I'm accepting all checks and all donations, please. Start a GoFundMe or something for me, darlings. Thank you. Um, so I was, and it's so funny because I knew nothing about the ballroom scene. And people were telling me, you don't know anything about Paris is burning? Nothing. So when I, before I went to prison, I knew nobody who was gay, nobody, anything of an alternative lifestyle. So getting out and somebody bringing me to the ball, meeting everybody, it was a culture shock to me, believe it or not. But I love the art form of ballroom. It just mesmerized me. So it's like, oh, I could do this. So I was like, of course, naturally, I'll walk face. So I came out as a con. I wasn't inducted into the house. I didn't know anything about it. I literally was like, the mother just took me in. You're going to be in my house. You're going to walk this. That's it. And, and people, and believe it or not, people in my house still to this day were a little offended by it because they had to be initiated into the house and I didn't. And sometimes, unfortunately, what people got to understand in life it happens that way. Some people just have pure talent and you can see it and you can't let it go. So you have to put them in that position. When it's undeniable, it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. And so that was my introduction to ballroom. And I was a con for many, many, many years. And still, that's my family. So I would be like, if I got married, I would be married to the Balenciagas because <laughs> con rings volumes in ballroom. Mm -hmm. Cons was a part of the the birth of ballroom in D.C., along with the House of Allure. It was also one of the very top houses back in the day. Like, you was not fucking with the cons at all. With performance and fighting and real life, all of that. You was not fucking with the cons. They still don't. They have taken the respect and they have never lost it. That's what I appreciate it because we are a family. First and foremost, it's not about walking a ball. It's not about a trophy. And that's the big misconception. I think that's the difference between ballroom then versus ballroom now, because I'm the baby of my whole family. And they all grew up with each other. And the, they literally, the mother, every she took in any and everybody. And, but I came along, I was already grown. So I'm almost 10 years plus younger than the oldest, I mean, the youngest of the family. And so I was just, just me. And I, how I got into Balenciaga, I ain't going to say the person's name, but they disrespected me on the mic at a ball. And one thing that you cannot do to me, I'm a loyal person. But if you disrespect me publicly, all bets are off. And I can either be your enemy, your worst nightmare, or I can be your best friend. And so I chose to leave the house at that moment on the floor, walking a grand prize category and still won. And I became a 007. And I stayed a 007 for almost a year or two. And no house wanted to touch me because they feared the cons. Because they just, just thought I was going to come back. But I won't. And Raquel sent Keith, $5,000 <laughs> club member, um, Keith Balenciaga to me to get me because she wanted to talk to me about joining her house. I went, I accepted the invitation. She was like, I've watched you. I've seen you grow. And... I could easily put somebody in my house as an overall to take my position, but I don't want that. I've been watching you for years and I want you. And not at that moment that she told me that she wanted me to be overall. I just told her I just wanted to come and be a member if I accept it. I came in, my friend Shane got killed in the Orlando club shooting and it's coming up on the anniversary five years ago. Um, I literally, I was in such a deep depression. I wanted to die. And Harold called me and he said, Shannon, I want you to be overall. Raquel wants you to be overall. You need to do this. And I didn't want to take it because I wasn't, I wasn't in that mind frame, but I'm, 
Shane spoke to me and told me to do it because it was our way to connect. And I was watching some old videos of us. He was the one who practiced with me to teach me how to say a face. Mm. He literally, he's Sasha's son too. And he taught me how to emulate all of the girls. <laughs> he taught me all of the girls' weaknesses. And it was almost kind of like he was speaking to me to tell me it's okay to take it. And I, and I did. And I was, it's been a blessing ever since because I bought from saving me at that moment where I probably would have took my own life. Mm. <laughs> Shannon, I also just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing. I, I can't, I really honestly can't imagine. I don't know if they're going to show it, but that's the part of ballroom that don't, nobody get to see and they, they miss. The show doesn't highlight how many people you, have, you affect their lives and they affect yours. And of course we all lose people. Of course we all lose people through this process called life, but it's very hard to love somebody who are not your blood mm -hmm. and you consider them your blood and you, you're left when they leave, you're left with all the guilt. You're left with the pain, but you also are left with all the loving memories that will never change. Do you think that that has sort of impacted how hard you love the rest of your family and particularly your kids, right? It has because it, when I came in the scene, I, I naturally I've had, when I came in the scene, it's always was about me, 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 because I've never had to take care of anybody. But what changed that was Diego. Mm -hmm. I allowed somebody in for the first time. And because he was so lovable, I attached myself to him to make sure that he succeeded what somebody never did for me. And I saw how, because I loved him so hardly, I mean, so, so hard, and not the rest of the kids in my house, it was a lot of jealousy because of that. And I could never understand why. But as I got older, I saw it. So I tried to... I can't spread myself then, and I still have to protect myself. But when I be put in certain situations with kids and I get to know them because I want it to be organic, um, when I attach to you, make sure that you accept it. Because <laughs> you can't, you, I'm not, I'm not going to be easy to give it to you. But when I give it to you, it's going to be well worth it. Thank you so much for, for sharing that moment with us, Shannon. Um, but honey, I would love to also know about how you came to Ballroom and, and, and Voguing. Um, so I first found Ballroom in a program at The Door in New York City. And um, I was just looking for a program so I could be able to dance in. I wasn't honestly even looking for voguing. As a professional dancer, I was looking for something different and I was looking to grow in my um, career. So I came to the door and I prospered from there. I was learning all types of styles still, still training in ballet, still training in African, still training in jazz, contemporary, all the accoutrements. But um, the teacher that was teaching me ballet at the door, Anthony Rodriguez, was saying that there's classes on Fridays of Vogue and he thought I would really enjoy that. So I came into the ballroom scene just by literally taking a class and thinking it was just another style of dance not knowing that there's this whole other world and community to it. And once I was introduced to that, and once I was introduced to the peer and going to balls and all the girls, I instantly fell in love. Because as a dancer, I dance very feminine and I'm very womanly. So what better way than to express my femininity and be authentically myself other than voguing? Because voguing, you are anticipating a woman, you're feeling like a woman, you're portraying a woman's traits. So that just instantly clicked in my head and I fell in love from day one. Um, joining that class, the teacher was a part of the House of La Beja. Mm -hmm. Was this Monster? Yes, this is Monster La Beja. He was one of the very first people that taught me how to Vogue. Love her. Yeah, he like broke everything down, taught me all the elements, and then brought me to um, the family of the House of La Beja. Which for, if people don't know, La Beja is the first house of ballroom. 
Yes, La Beja is the first house of ballroom. So I was very like, I was very happy to be a part of that. I was very happy to be a part of that family. And La Beja was kind of like, La Beja was dying out. And I'm happy that I got to be able to bring a lot of attention to the house because I was one of the star performers in that house. But push comes to shove. Sometimes people don't appreciate talent and sometimes people don't respect the talent. So unfortunately, I had to leave and I decided to go to the house of Balenciaga because I saw the power. I saw the family. I saw the amount of talent that was in that house. And I knew that they would be able to support me in my career outside of ballroom because I love ballroom. I love voguing. But unfortunately, as much as I would hate to say it, it's not my life. Outside of ballroom, I have a career that I'm trying to pursue. I have dreams that I need to make. And I think the world knows that ballroom has not been in the forefront as strong as much. And you need to be able to be multi-talented and have all these skills in order to succeed in the real world. And ballroom kind of distracted me a little bit before that. So I decided to like, you know, try to get my things together and really like make sure that the House of Balenciaga knows that I have a career outside of ballroom. And they support me with that and they support me 100%. And yeah. Shannon, was there, uh, did you have a relationship with the other members of the House of Balenciaga that were on Legendary with you prior to the show? And, And if not, how did that change while you guys were on the show? Well, believe it or not, I knew none of them. (laughs) (laughs) I knew some most of them too, but it was just like, I never really had a bond. So it was like, you're literally coming to the competition with people that you've never met. (laughs) So it was really like, it was hard. (laughs) It was hard. It wasn't hard for me. I met Jupiter several times, naturally, of course, but because everybody lives in different states than I do, um, I had... I've been in ballroom way longer than everybody. So I don't really like to travel (laughs) anymore. So if you don't come to me and we actually sit around, these are young kids and there's nothing wrong with that. They like to party and things of that nature. My, My world is a little bit different now. So this allowed me to sit down and get to know them each and individually. Right. And now they're not babies, so they can't get rid of me now. Um, we literally talk every single day, girl. <laughs> like, if Shannon's not calling us about something crazy, I'm calling them about something crazy. Yes. When I say it's a blessing, because you don't, um, you don't know, again, how you think you go into something to teach somebody because you might be a little older and experienced. But if you're a good person, you can learn from anyone, no matter how young they are. And they taught me more than I think I taught them. Honey, obviously during the season you guys were all bonding, you had to sort of leave because, not sort of, you left because your sister passed, which I'm sorry that happened to you, but you also came back. And I I wanted to hear a little bit about, you know, why it was important for you to sort of come back and, and, and continue on the show. When I first found out that my sister passed away in the competition, I honestly did not want to leave my room. It was the first time I've ever experienced a loss that was so close to my heart and someone that I truly, truly love. So I was grateful for Shannon, Cha-Cha, Kalik, um, Jupiter, and I was grateful that they were there for me literally 100% of the time checking in on me. Shannon would pop up literally when I'm crying and just make me feel better. Buy me flowers, buy me chocolate. So like having that support was really important to me. And I'm glad I did that because without them, I wouldn't be able to have have made the decision to leave the competition. I was so stuck between like, if I need to leave and coming back and missing so many competitions and what if we get eliminated while I'm gone? Like it was all this going through my head, but I knew that I had to go see my sister because I didn't want to regret that feeling for the rest of my life. So I had to go experience that. I had to go do that. I had to go love her. I had to go send her my last message, you know? So it was important for me to come back and make a statement to the world that you're able to push through anything that life throws at you. And I did that and I pushed through it and I was showing love and I was still working hard and I was still putting in that, I was still putting in that honey. (laughs) So everything was, it was a lot. It was honestly a lot. And the fact that when I came back, there was just so much drama, so much <laughs> tea, so much hate, Miss Thing. I was gagging. <laughs> you came back, though, and, like, you did that little track where you were commentating on the on the track. That was the next performance. Yes, Miss Thing. Bitch, I ain't back and I'm ready to attack. <laughs> okay. But 
Are you going to do that again? Because I kind of live for that track. I'm not going to lie. I really loved it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You could buy my music on Apple Music, SoundCloud. <laughs> <laughs> MC, MC Honeybee. But was that something that you had been ever interested in before? Or would you, you just like, I'm going to try this out? Like, where'd that come from? Oh, hell fucking no. I cannot commentate for shit. When I tell y'all, when we made that track, I was trying to make a moment for my return. And I felt like I needed to do something new for Ballroom. And I needed to do something new for the people that love and watch me. And I just wanted to show them that, bitch. I could do other categories, Miss Thing. I could commentate for the girls. Not in real life, but, you know, for the kiki, for the TV. But, um... Commentator versus commentator. Yes. And I just want to say thank you to HBO and thank you to all the crew for giving me the opportunity to leave and go more in the loss of my sister and having me return and having me like stay focused and being there for me 100% of the time. It was honestly beautiful. The amount of support I got when I returned from the crew mm. that there was still that you was allowed to come back because it fell under the guidelines that each and every contestant got and signed for. So there was no favoritism, unfortunately, what the people want to try to put out there and state that we all got the same contract. Boop. Yeah, the people who were trying to put out there that I have a better contract, the girls was getting paid more, the girls got to leave and come back because she apparently has a number amount of episodes. Like, at this point, after all these rumors had got out, I was like, oh, yeah, honey, bitch, you're fab. I was like, you are fab because bitch, there is no way that there is 50,000 rumors going around about me and most of them are not true. So, bitch. So, Shannon, was there something in particular that you wanted to show either for yourself or for the scene on, on the show? Yes, I did. First of all, I wanted the world to see that ballroom is more than just performance and dancing. Um, second of all, I wanted the world to see that what ballroom was founded on, which is face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you keep going back to face, Shannon, but you also won the body category. And I would love to hear a little bit about that category. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I am that body. <laughs> okay. Body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. Uh, huh, huh. Why a lot of people don't realize is that ballroom, if you go on back to Paris is Burning, maybe because that then you can understand body is a lot of different things. Right. Luscious and everything. It's not about your physique if you're the most muscular, all these things. And women can get away with a little bit more than men can. And unfortunately, I would have went out on the stage if it was my choice completely butt naked because nobody else on the cast could do that. Now, eat those apples, baby. But I wasn't allowed to. And that's fine. So I had to find another avenue to be able to be as naked as I possibly can. So I chose a little Alexandra McQueen number from my ballroom history of winning $5,000 face. And I mean, $5,000 um, perfect tens. And that's what I chose because I had to have a compromise. So I, I enjoyed it. And I, can't, I would never change anything because I think it was a beautiful moment to show the world to stop underestimating someone mm. and start loving people for who they are. And sometimes judgmental um, people and their ideas and opinions don't matter. At the end of the day, is this is TV. You better entertain. When I tell you I found out, I did not find out from not one Balenciaga that Shannon went out there with her pussy out, naked, all bodies, titties, everything out. And mind you, because of the outfit malfunction, she literally had to tell them to spray her all over her body in the back room so she could be able to walk the category. When I found out, bitch, and I saw that clip, I gagged. <laughs> I was like, Shannon, where did all this ass come from? I did not know you could jiggle it that much. Honey, what about you? Was there something that you wanted to show while you were on the show? I definitely wish that I got to walk that duck walk category because I honestly would have smoked every single bitch. No shade. The girls is not doing me with duck walks. I could last an hour with duck walks. So I really wanted to walk that category because I wanted to, you know, just be the master of that element and be able to win that cash and say, oh, bitch, I got $15,000 for walking duck walk, you know? Y'all really came on here to pop y'all shit today, didn't y'all? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. 
You know what's so funny? What a lot of people don't realize? We like to have fun. We don't, all that competition, all that rah-rah, all that trying to throw shade and stuff. Forget all that. Just enjoy and have fun. We did not throw shade to not one single house, not one single contestant, but the shade was definitely being thrown at us. And most of the time it was being missed. Just like that mist, just like that mist, she sprayed on Cha-Cha. It missed us. No, but I love all the girls. I love all the girls and all the girls are girling. And we had a fun time on the show. I literally love every single contestant that was there, most of them. And yeah. You know, you didn't get a chance to do the duck walk challenge, but you did in the end battle and beat Prince Miyake Mugler in floor performance, which oh to me was, I kind of lived. I mean, I didn't live for you beating him. No shade. I love Prince, but I kind of gagged. Bitch, I gagged too. I mean, you was doing what the fuck you needed to do, but I still gagged. <laughs> no, let me tell y'all something. On the show, Laomi said that I can't take negative criticism. I seem like a bitch, if I remember correctly. And um, I feel like I got it like that. And I don't think I have to go all out for everyone, you know? Any battle I have and anybody I'm battling, I'm going to give you my 100% attitude, energy, charisma, all of that. I'm going to give you 100% me every time, no matter who I'm battling. So that battle was crazy. I knew that it's Prince Miyaki Mugler and I had to like really step my cookies up because she is mother puss. She is mother puss. So I was like, okay, I gotta step my cookies up. I gotta, I gotta send her home. No shit. I gotta send her packing. And I knew that I just had to like really just I had to cast the judge's eye. So I made sure that I looked at every single one of them every like 10 seconds doing some next like bendy shit. Like I knew I had to do some splits, some kicks, you know, to really get their attention. I also want to say that like being able to sit Prince Mugler is such a big moment for me. I'm just happy that I got to battle someone like that because in her caliber, like she is legendary. Like she is one of the girls. Right. And I'm just happy that I was able to battle her and it was an honor to sit her. I was actually going to say it was interesting because, you know, I've been watching you for for years. And so I remember the old clips. I remember what the girls used to say. And I have absolutely seen your performance evolve over time into being all these things that you're describing now, right? Like, honey, four years ago, I don't think I would have ever seen you melting like you did in that category. And so it's been interesting to watch, you know, your performance uh, evolve, which to me mimics in ways what happened to Laomi and that like when she came out the gate, she was doing all these things that people were not living for and were, you know, shading her for all the time. And then she began to incorporate the elements over time that people wanted to see while still putting her same, you know, her specific spin on it, which I feel like is what I've seen you do. A lot of people say that me and Laomi kind of have similar stories. I would say that the only difference is that she is a woman and I'm a butch queen. So my Vogue literally, like I'm an adapter. Like I had to adapt to my environment every single time I walked the ball. So I knew that every single time I walked the ball, it got better and better and better and better because I learned something new each and every single time. If it wasn't about spacing, it was about what the judges liked. If it wasn't about what the judges liked, it was about how to break down my elements and how to melt and how to get their attention. So it's important for me. And I'm glad that you said my um, Vogue has been growing because I've literally been working on it for years so the girls can stop bullying the girls and telling me my Vogue looked crazy and all this other stuff. I definitely found my own sauce. I definitely found my own Vogue. And um, it's only up from here. Do you know what the most important thing, too, about everybody as a performer, what they learn from each ball? You learn what the crowd go up for. And that in every single time that teaches you, because some people don't ever get to that pinnacle and get the feedback from the crowd. But those who have that sheer moment in time is like no other. Can you describe one of the first memories you have of having that happen to you, Shannon? My best memory is when I walked the first Mugler $5,000 face. And just the look alone sent the room from the floor to the balcony, all the way from the back door. Because they tell, doing face, they always tell us, you have to start selling from the back door. And you just, as you walk, the crowd just roars like a lion. And that was like the first time that every step I took, the room just grew and got louder. 
but it's a feeling and experience. While you walk in a moment, you might not get it, but watching the footage back, you'd be like, wow, it happened. What I do is I usually like, I always try to command my audience and command their attention. Like I'm looking into every single person's eyes and I'm letting them know that I'm about to fuck it up. Like I want to make sure that everyone is watching me and I command that attention. So I come with this energy of like, I'm that girl. And you have to come with that energy because if you don't, then bitch, the confidence is not going to show in your Vogue. This is going to be my last question for Honey. So I wasn't going to let you go without talking about these boots and what happened. (laughs) So Miss Mamas, you know, what happened? Okay, the critiques I received all season were pretty like wrong to me only because I didn't relate to those critiques at all. A lot telling me that I need to humble myself because of the fact that I said these ugly ass shoes and I did not mean it in any way. And I apologize to everyone that was on the crew and on the stylisting team that um, I didn't mean in any sort of way. But Law just took it a whole different way and just decided to grade the whole team on what I said. So it was just like, that's a little too much for me. I don't, I didn't do nothing wrong, girl. That's just how I speak. That's just how I act. And if the girls took it the wrong way, the girls took it the wrong way. But at the end of the day, Miss Thing. Honey, always get us in a sticky spot. Shannon, it was also interesting to me because you nipped that in the bud on stage. You're like, no, not now. We're not about to do this. <laughs> I hope they got that on camera, girl. Oh, they absolutely got it on camera. And Shannon was like, don't, like, no. No, because I really wanted to say something to him. I really wanted to be like, law, Miss Thing. I did not mean it like that, girl. You, What you need to do is put that seven down and pick up that 10 because you know you love the performance. But you know what's going to happen? The same thing was going to happen for us, the same thing that happened to Chi-Chi. And I was not going to allow you to go out like that because I'm a mother. A real mother's going to protect her children, even though she know at the moment it's not the right time. We could do that on the back end. But right now, let me protect you. It was that something that was happening a lot. It see, there was another moment where you said, like, y'all can't do that. Like, it was these sorts of ways of, like, being a mother in the back end talking about, like, you know, this isn't just about performance. But this is about the way that we're carrying ourselves through the competition and interacting with people. I think Shannon's goal was to make sure that we literally just came to that stage to perform. And that is all. Get their critiques, perform, come back stronger. I need to make sure they protect themselves and their image and be professionals along the way. I need to teach them how you command respect from individuals so that when you get out here in the world, you do this on your own, you know how to maneuver situations. And also I wanted them to respect, only respect yourself, but respect others. Regardless, you can't, you can't change how somebody perceive you even though you're doing the right thing and they don't understand everything that you're doing, you got to be uh, well with how you maneuver in life so you can sleep well at night. Well, thank you guys so, so much. We are so happy to have had you on the podcast and I'm looking forward to seeing both of you soon. Shannon, I just saw you at a ball, but I'm hoping to see both of you again soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. And we want to send shout outs to Cha-Cha, Jupiter, and Kalik. We love you guys. Thank you so, so much to the overall mother, Shannon Balenciaga, and house member Honey Balenciaga, both from the House of Legends. But now, it's time for the let out moment, where I pick the snippet of the show that will be stuck in my head for the foreseeable future. This week, I'm choosing a moment from the beginning of the episode. After judging all season long, Meg the Stallion brought her talents to the floor and performed with the two remaining houses. What really made it special for me was that she not only performed her hit song Body, but that she did a voguing mix for the track. For years, Ballroom has taken and remixed mainstream songs to fit us. So to hear this official version performed by the artist hit me right in the feels. Let's take another listen and make sure to check back next week for a special Winner's Circle episode of the show.
The Let Out is produced by HBO Max in partnership with Spoke Media. Make sure to stream episodes of Legendary and The Let Out on HBO Max. Stay tuned for a very special episode coming soon on HBO Max and your podcast feeds featuring none other than members of the reigning Legendary House, Miyaki Mugler, and judge of our dreams, Laomi Maldonado. Tell us all your thoughts about the departure of the House of Balenciaga over at Legendary Max on Instagram. I'm your host, Michael Street. You can find me at Michael Street on Instagram. For Spoke Media, our producer is Kelly Kauf with help from Hebron Mendez, Alicia Force, Brigham Mosley, Janielle Kastner, and myself. Original music and sound design by Evan Arnett. Special thanks to Clay Kim and Ariel Mejia. Our executive producers are Aliyah Tavakolian and Keith Reynolds. See you next time. <laughs>